So today we're going to continue talking about um, skeletal muscle relaxants. But the focus today is on only spasmal lytics. So certain chronic diseases of the CNS, example cerebral palsy, which is a disease um, that you can see in children. They have problems with their cognition. They can't move um, well, like us, cannot walk. So a lot of them are bedridden. Then we have multiple sclerosis, which is a CNS disease which affects um, people mainly in the well, not so much in our part of the of the world, but of course there are some uh, Malaysians who have this disease and they are walking around and they might not appear to have the disease, but they do have multiple sclerosis and they. This tend, tends to um, come and go. They tend to have relapses from time to time, but otherwise they might be appearing normal. And then we have stroke, of course, um, which is uh, also known as CVA or cerebrovascular accident. So these are all diseases of the CNS. So and when you have di these diseases, so you you see an abnormally high reflex activity in the neuronal pathways and this might lead to painful spasm so you have spasm of the skeletal muscle causing pain and discomfort so this degree of pain of course will vary from between different individuals but nevertheless uh, the pain is still present or it might not be present in some people but it might be present in some others so acute injury or muscle inflammation can lead to spasm and also pain either one or both so the goal of spasmolytic therapy the lysis of spasm or reduction in spasm or um, trying to abolish or diminish spasm in both chronic and acute conditions is reduction of excessive skeletal muscle tone without strength reduction so you want to reduce the spasm you want to reduce the excessive mus skeletal muscle tone but you don't want the patients to have lost um, you don't want them to have diminished strength you don't have to, you don't want them to have reduced strength okay in the muscles you just want them to have reduction in the muscle tone okay so hopefully with spasm reduction there will be less pain and also improve mobility so the patients hopefully can move better once the pain is improved so when once there is less spasm so they can have better range of movements so from say, say for example from 30 degrees you can have 90 degrees because of the redu reduction in spasm in certain um, joints so you have a, an improved mobility and also hopefully less pain so what are the drugs that are used for acute muscle spasm so there are many drugs Example cyclobenzaprine, methylcarbamol, orphanibrine are used for the treatment of acute spasm resulting from muscle injury. I have never used um, cyclobenzaprine and methylcarbamol, and I'm not sure whether they are used in Malaysia, but uh, orphanibrine definitely is used. So you should know a little bit and you should read on orphanibrine. So this is a, a drug which is commonly used in the um, accident emergency ward in psychiatry in pediatrics medicine so you should know about this and most of these drugs are sedatives or acting the brain stem 
so meaning that they many of these drugs can cause um, sedation can cause you to be drowsy sleepy or many of these drugs act in the brain stem and none of these drugs are effective in muscle spasm due to cerebral palsy or spinal cord injury so you might use them for cases like as mentioned previously multiple sclerosis or you can use them for conditions like um, due to side effects of certain drugs so you can have um, what is known as acute dystonia for example and then you want to give ophenadrine but you cannot it's not going to be useful if you give um, these drugs if the patient has if the spasm is due to a cerebral palsy or an injury in the spinal cord for example due to an accident trauma okay so it's not effective in cerebral palsy or spinal cord injury but it can be useful in stroke or it can be useful in multiple sclerosis and other diseases when you have acute muscle spasm due to these conditions and then we move on to talking about drugs used for chronic muscle spasm so these drugs act in the CNS okay and in the CNS the central nervous system or on the skeletal muscle cell so they either act in the CNS or on the skeletal muscle cell rather than at the neuromuscular end plate so they these drugs don't act at the neuromuscular end plate but they act at the CNS level the brain and the spinal cord or at the on the skeletal muscle cell so these drugs include diazepam a very important drug a very popular drug which is also used for many conditions including um, for fit for fits if you have a seizure then you can give diazepam can be given for sedation and it can be given for as a relaxant and anxiolytic to for people who are too anxious sometimes they might be given diazepam so diazepam is a benzodiazepine which facilitates GABA mediated presynaptic inhibition another drug is oclofen which is a GABA agonist that causes membrane hyperpolarization so in, instead of um, depolarizing the drug it causes hyperpolarization so it causes the charges to be more negative on the membrane potential so so this is um, due to increased this is done by increasing potassium conductance so when you increase potassium conductance so you will um, cause the membrane potential to be more negative okay and this reduces the release of excitatory neurotransmitters including substance p <clears throat> okay, and this will eventually hopefully lead to reduction in the muscle tone and also reduction in pain and also increase in mobility of the muscle and then we have tizanidine uh, which is a congener of clonidine so so it's, it's related to clonidine um, you, and you know that this drug has significant alpha 2 agonist activity which reinforces both presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition in the cord. Okay. And all the three drugs act in the spinal cord. All these three drugs, diazepam, baclofen, and tizanidine, act in the spinal cord and reduce the tonic output of the primary spinal motor neurons. Okay. It reduces the tonic output of the primary spinal motor neurons again causing reduction in spasm and also hopefully reduction in pain and increased mobility and then another agent dentrolene okay dentrolene is a, a drug that you 
you might encounter in your reading from time to time, including in when you read books on psychiatric drugs. So this is an agent, this is a drug that acts on the sarcoplasmic reticulum of skeletal muscle. So what this drug do is it really it reducts it reduces causes reduction in the release of activated calcium via interaction with the rhinodine receptor RYR. So re this receptor channel. So dentholine acts with the channel and causing a reduction in the release of activated calcium. But it doesn't um, really affect cardiac and smooth muscles. So its focus is mainly on skeletal muscle. It doesn't disturb that much cardiac and smooth muscle, which is a good thing. So this drug is also effective in treatment of malignant hypothermia. So malignant hypothermia, as its name implies, is, is a, it's a severe condition, it's a worrying condition. Uh, characterized by increase in temperature, and the frigidity of the muscles, increased tone. So it's characterized by massive calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of skeletal muscle. So this is a rare condition. Malignant hypothermia is rare, but can be triggered by saxamethonium, or, saxin, or also known as saxincholine, or we call it choline, or tubercularine. So, dentrolin in this case is given intravenously to block calcium release. Besides that, uh, remember that we're talking about drugs that are used for chronic muscle spasm. So, we also can use um, Botox, botulinum toxin, which can be injected into muscles to reduce pain caused by severe spasm, and also can be used in more generalized spastic disorders, example, cerebral palsy. And then we have gabapentin, which is effective in spasm due to multiple sclerosis. So I think that is all from me today, um, as a continuation of the previous talk on skeletal muscle relaxants. So today is only focusing on spasmolytics. So hopefully we'll see you again in our next video. Thank you and have a good day.